story of one of the truly amazing achievements in history. In the 60s, we were able to reach for the moon, even while falling into discord on Earth. Proved we could do anything if we put our minds to it. So lest we forget, we remember. July 20th, 1969. July what? July 20th, in 69. Well, I presume it was something to do with Neil Armstrong landing on the moon. They landed on the moon for the first time. I actually remember watching that. We choose to go to the moon. Go, I don't go. Guys, go. Control. Go. Control. Go. We choose to go to the moon. Countdown. Go. Get the go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Yeah, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, that Saturn gave us a magnificent ride. They were launched by liquid oxygen and cold, hard cash. $24 billion spent on 20,000 private contractors employing 400,000 technicians. Americans had asked for the moon. NASA gave it to them. In the 60s, they were a can-do progressive agency. They said they were going to do something, and by God, they did it. And Apollo 11 is in a good orbit. She's going a little bit faster than they had planned, but uh, all well within limits. It was a three-day, quarter-million-mile trip. Michael Collins navigated using stars Fomalhaut, Rigel, Altair, the stars used and named by the ancient Sumerians, the world's first navigators. Now we would use the same stars to sail to the moon. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go for TLI, over. The crew still had to sleep, still had to shave. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins sounding... Uh as if they're having a ball. Uh, Their first meal in space was chicken salad and applesauce. Aldrin asks Neil Armstrong if he knows what he'll say when he steps on the moon. Not yet, Armstrong replied. I'm still thinking it over. Well, actually, I didn't worry about it till after landing because uh, I guess in my own view, we didn't have uh, that good a chance of completing a successful landing. In fact, piloting the Eagle, the lunar lander, would bring the mission to the brink of failure. Zero, 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 nine or eight. Three days and four hours after liftoff, Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit. 101 hours into the mission, the Eagle separated from Columbia. Roger, how does it look? The Eagle has wings. Michael Collins would stay behind, orbiting 50 miles above the moon. The Eagle lunar module would land on the moon, carrying Aldrin and Armstrong, a procedure that could not be fully tested in Earth's gravity. Mission Control polled the flight controllers. Okay, all flight controllers, go, no, go for landing. Retro. Go. Rhino. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. The engine burn worked perfectly. Still looking very good. Here go. The computer didn't. Alarm. It was what's called a 1202 alarm. Armstrong had to act fast. It was a reading on the 1202 program alarm. It meant the computer was getting more data than it could handle. It took controllers three seconds to decide whether to abort or go for the landing. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. They were dropping below 2,000 feet. Ignoring the alarm meant that while they could land, they might not have a good computer for liftoff the next day. And still, the alarms were popping. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. Armstrong later said if this was a simulation, they probably would have aborted. But it was not a simulation. We're go. Same type. We're go. And at an altitude of 500 feet, Neil Armstrong took over manual control of landing the Eagle. And one of the first things he heard was this. 60 seconds. That meant there was only 60 seconds of landing fuel left. They were 200 feet high. And because they'd been distracted by alarms, they didn't know exactly where they were or where they were supposed to land. Still, Armstrong slows the descent and hears... 30 seconds. 30 seconds of fuel left, 35 feet high. The engine plume blows dust that has lain undisturbed for billions of years as the Eagle slowly sets down at last. They end up with as little as seven seconds of fuel remaining. The voice of Charlie Duke... We copy you down, Eagle. ...of Neil Armstrong. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Five months and 10 days before the end of the decade, two Americans had landed on the moon. Inside the eagle, Buzz Aldrin has hidden away a silver chalice and a tiny vial of wine. The display keyboard becomes an altar as he drinks the wine, reads silently from a communion service, and gives thanks for the intelligence and spirit that brought two young pilots to the moon. Seven hours after they land, the hatch opens. I'm going to step off the limb. Armstrong has had time to think about what he'll say. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.